Let's solve the number 11 uh, to number 15 on um, this GCRA of RPI Chemistry 1. Okay, so the next question is uh, the following property of an argon is an extensive property. It's just a one to, you know, to get familiar with the languages. So the what's the opposite uh, of an extensive property? This is a, what we call the intensive properties. And so let's just say that you have a number of moles, one moles of argon, and then now you change it into n is two moles. If you do that, in a container, let's say you have a one moles of argon gas, so now same container now you have a double the amount of argon molecules uh, in that container. And the property that depends on the amount, which is an amount here in the chemistry term, is uh, easily represented by number of moles, and that's uh, uh, extensive properties. But if you change uh, the, the, the quantity or property that's not depending uh, on the amount that you have, is on uh, what we call intensive properties. So mo what's the most common intensive properties? Temperature. Right, so temperature is if you double the amount, the temperature doesn't change, and so the temperature is an intensive. And what about the the gas molecule moves around? If you double the amount, the speed of gas molecule does not change. Or what about the the, the density? Uh, if you double the amount, uh, actually the the gas uh, density as it is, would not change. Uh, this is, I think, the, a little misrepresentation that I draw in here, but it's I th actually the best way to, for me to do is actually, let's say, if you have this box, right, and now you double the size on the, on the boxes, and then what, uh, what kind of property is changing, what property doesn't change. Density doesn't change if you have an argon. Argon has an intrinsic uh, density as a gas, so the density does not change by doubling the amount. But the mass uh, of the, of the, of the um, argon does change when you increase the amount, so therefore the mass is an answer. Okay, so now, now the th the problem number 12, uh, this is a question about, okay, there is a flask. The flask has a mass of this, and when it's empty, and then when you fill with the water, there's some, there's so on. And then the, they say when the same flask is filled, the concentrated phosphoric acid, and uh, they measure the mass. So then, then can you t talk about the density of this, uh, this concentrated phosphoric acid? So the, I guess the, it, we can start from this idea about density is essentially mass or volume. And the, the, this flask, and this actually, what we, well actually we also call it as a volumetric flask. You might have used in the, your chemistry uh, class uh, when, you, when you take the chemistry in the high school, there is a, like a very long neck with a line in it. And that's what we call the volumetric flask. And this, uh, the glassware itself weighs 68.20 gram. But as a combined uh, water, we, we don't know the mass of the water, water mass, uh, which is, we know, x. Uh, that's, uh, that's a gram. And the mass of the water is essentially uh, the total mass, 567.12 minus 68.20 gram. And by doing so, you'll find out the mass is 498.92 gram. Okay, so this is a volumetric flask. This must be what we call the uh, 500 ml volumetric flask. 
and then you actually measure the mass of the water by just filling it up to the lines and then uh, by filling it up you can actually have an accurate volume of the this volumetric mask because uh, each flask is different and now they give this the very valuable information that let's just assume that water has a density of this so from the mass of the water here right the water here we can calculate the volume by uh, the this the mass of water divided by the density and you will find out because it's a one the conversion is easy the volume is same as 498.92 cubic centimeter so that's the volume so we can use the volume here and then the, for the concentrated phosphoric acids uh, the mass their mass is 911.37 so therefore the, the density is 9.11 uh, gram divided by 498.92 cubic centimeter and if you multiply and plug in the numbers you'll find 1.827 gram per cubic centimeter so that's the answer so I got this answer uh, not the uh, the one and uh, probably uh, this is a correct answer and I need to double check with the doctor Ma, but I'm According to my calculation, E is the correct answer. Okay, so now the number 3, mm, 13, and which statement? So this is a statement, the uh, chemical reaction shown in below. Demonstrate uh, best, what is the best procedure to demonstrate this, okay? So what this really means is two moles of magnesium, one mole of oxygen reacts to produce the magnesium oxide, two moles of magnesium oxide. And so the first thing is, the, okay, so this one to demonstrate, this is actually trying to elude it there. What is an experimental procedure? Okay, how you, if you want to demonstrate it, you want to show it in a certain experimental setup. That's what this implying it. But let's just go things by one by one. So show that the sum of two atomic molar mass of Mg plus one molar mass of uh, oxygen, okay? And that is equal to two molar mass of MgO. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this statement. This is the same statement as before, but this one is, to me, it is a theoretical, right? This is too theoretical. You, it's not... It's not a procedure to demonstrate that the reaction is really uh, obeys uh, what is called the law of conservation of matter, mass conservation. If you want to do that, you actually perform, need to do the experiment. What about the second, uh, second set, second statement? Uh, one gram of magnesium ribbon uh, with a pure, burning the pure oxygen that results in the original mass of uh, one uh, produced uh, to compare the mass of uh, product with a one original mass of one gram. I think this one doesn't really uh, make any differences to, to prove that the magnesium converted to magnesium oxide. Burn one gram of ribbon uh, and then scrape out all the MgO form and compare that with original mass of Mg and that might differentiate the difference between Mg and an MgO as a, as a product, but does not really uh, uh, really uh, try to sh establish the relationship. The reason is because of this statement here. If you're looking at that, in a tall beaker filled with error, okay? You know, do you remember the beaker is like just an open system, right? So you have this magnesium, and then this is open to the air. So the oxygen is uh, feel free to go in and out. So it's not a, it is a, it, this is an open system. So 
therefore it, this is not not a good choice the last one is this is a key the sealed flash bulb so it is a sealed system which is a closed system and then then you react with the magnesium with an oxygen and you ignite the mixture so let the reaction go let it cool down and then you just compare the mass differences so this is a you know closed system the conversion of um, magnesium into magnesium oxide so therefore d is the correct answer okay uh, the number four, okay, 14, is uh, what is called, uh, which one is the uh, least active? Least active means most stable. And if you remember the periodic table, that is essentially we call the noble gas. So noble gas, such as a helium, neon, argon, these are the uh, the we call the very stable uh, atomic gas. They are the very stable one. Uh, alkaline, uh, uh, alkali, which is a uh, lithium, sodium, potassium. They are very uh, very reactive. Okay, so potassium, or this such as a uh, magnesium. Calcium, these are the reactive one. Halogen is like a fluorine, chlorine, bromine. They are they are also reactive. The one that essentially pretty stable is a noble gas. That is, uh, that's an answer. In the uh, elements, okay, it's a pure elements. Okay, it's so the last problem, number 15, uh, and this is a sucrose. You know, sucrose is another name called, we call it sugar, okay? Sugar, there are many types of sugar, glucose, uh, lactose, but sucrose is commonly known as a table top sugar, and it has a C12, H22, oxygen 11. And so there are 12 carbon molecule, uh, bonded together with 22 hydrogen with 11 oxygen that constituted the sucrose, which is uh, like a disaccharide, uh, two uh, six-member ring of carbons uh, 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 glued it together, and I think that that's what uh, this is constituted. But what the problem is asking is uh, percentage of the carbon by mass. So they want to know mass percentage of carbon here. And then you you just have to remember that carbon has an atomic mass of 12, hydrogen has an atomic mass of 1, oxygen has an atomic mass of 16. So therefore, I can simply, from the sucrose, the total mass is 12 carbon with 12 mass. One, uh, 22 hydrogen with 1 gram per mole mass, atomic mass, and 11 oxygen with 16 uh, gram per mole of atomic mass, and uh, the percentage of the carbon mass, which is 12 times 20, uh, 12. Right? So then this one sums up to 144. 342. That is 0.421, so 42.1% mass of carbon. Right? So that's the answer, which is number 15.